Because time slows down close to the speed of light, special relativity provides us with a means of going to the stars. This region of northern Italy is not only the cauldron of some of the thinking of the young Albert Einstein, it is also the home of another great genius who lived 400 years earlier, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo delighted in climbing these hills and viewing the ground from a great height as if he were soaring like a bird. He drew the first aerial views of landscapes, villages, fortifications. I've been talking about Einstein in and around this town of Vinci in which Leonardo grew up. Einstein greatly respected Leonardo and their spirits in some sense inhabit this countryside still. Among Leonardo's many accomplishments in painting, sculpture, architecture, natural history, anatomy, geology, civil and military engineering, he had a great passion. He wished to construct a machine which would fly. He made sketches of such machines, built miniature models, constructed great full-scale prototypes. And not a one of them ever worked. Mainly because there were no machines of adequate capacity available in his time. The technology was just not ready. The designs, however, were brilliant. For example, this bird-like machine here in the Leonardo Museum in the town of Vinci. Leonardo's great designs encouraged engineers in later epochs, although Leonardo himself was very depressed at these failures. But it's not his fault he was trapped in the 15th century. A somewhat similar case occurred in 1939, when a group of engineers calling themselves the British Interplanetary Society decided to design a ship which would carry people to the moon. Now, it was by no means the same design as the Apollo ship, which actually took people to the moon some years later. But that design suggested that a mission to the moon might one day be a practical engineering possibility. Today, we have preliminary designs of ships which will take people to the stars. They are constructed in Earth orbit, and from there, they venture on their great interstellar journeys. One of them is called Project Orion. It utilizes nuclear weapons, hydrogen bombs, against an inertial plate, each explosion providing a kind of putt-putt, a fast nuclear motorboat in space. Orion seems entirely practical and was under serious development in the United States until the signing of the international treaty forbidding nuclear weapons explosions in space. Personally, the Orion Starship is the best use of nuclear weapons I can think of, provided the ships don't depart from very near the Earth. Project Daedalus is a recent design of the British Interplanetary Society. It assumes the existence of a nuclear fusion reactor, something much safer as well as more efficient than the existing nuclear fission power plants. We do not yet have fusion reactors. One day, quite soon, we may. Orion and Daedalus might go 10% the speed of light. 
So a trip to Alpha Centauri, four and a half light years away, would take 45 years, less than a human lifetime. Such ships could not travel close enough to the speed of light for the time-slowing effects of special relativity to become important. It does not seem likely that such ships would be built before the middle of the 21st century, although we could build an Orion starship now. For voyages beyond the nearest stars, something must be added. Perhaps they could be used as multi-generation ships, so those arriving would be the remote descendants of those who had originally set out centuries before. Or perhaps some safe means of human hibernation might be found, so that the space travelers might be frozen and then thawed out when they arrive at the destination centuries later. But fast interstellar spaceflight, approaching the speed of light, is much more difficult. That's an objective not for a hundred years, but for a thousand or for 10,000. But it also is possible. A kind of interstellar ramjet has been proposed, which scoops up the hydrogen atoms which float between the stars, accelerates them into an engine, and spits them out the back. But in deep space, there is one atom for every 10 cubic centimeters of space. For the ramjet to work, it has to have a frontal scoop hundreds of kilometers across. When the ship reaches relativistic velocities, the hydrogen atoms will be moving with respect to the interstellar spaceship at close to the speed of light. If precautions aren't taken, the passengers will be fried by these induced cosmic rays. There's a proposed solution. A laser is used to strip electrons off the atoms and make them electrically charged while they're still some distance away. And an extremely strong magnetic field is used to deflect the charged atoms into the scoop and away from the rest of the spacecraft. This is engineering on a scale so far unprecedented on the Earth. We are talking of engines the size of small worlds. Suppose that the spacecraft is designed to accelerate at 1G so we'd be comfortable aboard it. We'd be going closer and closer to the speed of light until the midpoint of the journey. Then the spacecraft is turned around and we decelerate at 1G to the destination. For most of the trip, the velocity would be very close to the speed of light and time would slow down enormously. By how much? Barnard star could be reached by such a ship in eight years ship time. The center of the Milky Way galaxy in 21 years. The Andromeda galaxy in 28 years. Of course, the people left behind on the Earth would see things somewhat differently. Instead of 21 years to the center of the galaxy, they would measure it as 30,000 years. When we got back, very few of our friends would be around to greet us. In principle, such a journey, mounting the decimal points closer and closer to the speed of light, would even permit us to circumnavigate the known universe in 56 years ship time. We would return tens of billions of years in the far future, with the Earth a charred cinder and the sun dead. Relativistic spaceflight makes the universe accessible to advanced civilizations, but only to those who go on the journey, not to those who stay home. These designs are probably further from the actual interstellar spacecraft of the future than Leonardo's models are from the supersonic transports of the present. But if we do not destroy ourselves, I believe that we will one day venture to the stars. When our solar system is all explored, the planets of other stars will beckon.
space travel and time travel are connected. To travel fast into space is to travel fast into the future.